Check. Check, 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 check. Yes. Hello, 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 hello. Check. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Yo, can you guys hear me now? Are things going well? You can hear it, finally, I'm assuming. Give me some, uh, some thumbs ups if you can hear things. Okay, there we go. All right, we're working. We're working with, we're working with fire now. I'm not standing in the basement anymore with phone problems. That was probably really loud. Uh, all right, so I wanted to do like an update video. I haven't been making a crazy amount of YouTube videos recently just because, I don't know, this year has been crazy. Um, and there's been a lot of changes going on and I've kind of been molding my setup for the last six to eight months, really two years since DJI came out three years ago, something like that. Um, however, some of you guys saw earlier, if you, if you tuned in that I got at these boys and I got some uh, some air unit O3s the like newest latest greatest DJI action I also have some mounts that work with the apex although we are working right now to try to get some apex top plates and bottom plates that work with uh, O3 so Anyways, let me just get into the meat of the scenario. Obviously, you see me with these. I get a lot of questions all the time about people asking, do I want to, uh, or do I only fly digital now, or do I only fly analog? What's the question with that? Well, first of all, I think there's a use case for both. Um, in my use case, I'll tell you why I, li like, I like analog for freestyle, and I like DJI for everything else. So work, whether that's commercial work, or just exploring things, or are going out and you know long range per se like I prefer DJI for that kind of stuff especially in new environments because I can't see very well with analog yes it can go farther um, but for the most part I'd rather be able to see and kind of stick within a specific bubble um, that is technically kind of long range for me um, but I'll give you a background story of why my flying style kind of came about and then like what I'm gonna be doing in the future to hopefully make this uh, new DJI stuff work for me so 
As you guys are familiar, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I like to fly super fast, super low, and I do as many tricks as possible, and I just really enjoy that. Um, that style, like aggressive freestyle flying, was kind of catered towards the, the gear that was available. So when I first got into FPV, I was like thinking that, oh, I can sit in my office and like fly around the neighbor's house and do all kinds of crazy things. Um, and then I realized that analog really wasn't that way. I tried 1.3 video and 900 or 433 megahertz control link. The latency went up and it just wasn't as fun. So moral of that story is I catered to 5.8 and 2.4 control link, 5.8 for video. And I was able to fly really fast, really close to myself, but I wasn't really able to go that far. So I catered my flying style to what was available technology wise. I just went super fast, super low to the ground and didn't really go that far. Yes, kind of pushed the boundaries some of the times and went kind of far away, but I've never really gone that far. I would say like a mile is the furthest I've ever flown an FPV drone. Um, however, with the most recent technology coming out, like the DJI goggles, the goggles, whatever V2s, the goggles 2s, all, all of this stuff, um, it has become more and more clear to me that there's a different type of style coming about from this newer technology. Yes, there are things like HD zero and I love what they're doing and it's only gonna get better with time. But in right now in this limbo state, there's a, you know, the fat shark thing as well. I forget what it's called. Walk snail, woke snail is what it's called. Um, yeah, with all this new technology, it's kind of changing my uh, mentality on what type of flying I want to do because I've always tried to cater this newer technology to my flying style which doesn't really work because I don't have the confidence. It's not impossible to do. Yes, I can fly fast and low to the ground and do all kinds of crazy stuff, um, but it is difficult for me to feel as confident and not crash as much which, you know, the more I fly, the older I get, the more I realize that, hey, you know, like pushing the boundaries is one thing and flying within your comfort zone is one thing, but if you're just pushing your boundaries all the time because you're not necessarily uh, you're not comfortable with the equipment. It's not necessarily that I can't do it. I'm just going to crash more often trying to get a, sh a trick that I could do in two seconds with analog most of the time because of the latency increase. Yes, it's not impossible. Do I want to learn how to fly DJI hardcore freestyle? Probably not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my what I'm doing with FPV more so and mainly because like flying freestyle and and stuff like that requires it's kind of fun to do it with other people that also do that and there's fewer and fewer people that are flying freestyle I'm not saying that I'm quitting I'm not saying that I'm gonna stop flying the way that I do because that is the way that I enjoy flying but as far as my analog like freestyle super fast stuff I'm gonna be doing that with an analog drone um, maybe an action too uh, and a thir an 1100 milliamp battery. So that is my setup. I haven't changed it in a very long time. I'm running my V4 Stout motors here, which are the 2306, uh, 2306 1750 KV motors. I've got low profile pitch props on here on an Apex with you know analog video, 5.8 video, uh, a GoPro, uh, whatever this is, lens with a analog camera that can't be bought anymore. I'm running. Fettech Electronics, Fettech Flight Controller, G4, but I'm running the KISS F firmware um, because I haven't switched to the alpha stuff yet for my freestyle rigs because as you guys are kind of aware, all the stuff that I do, uh, I don't really love changing stuff if I don't really feel the need to change and there was no need as far as my style was concerned to change electronics and change to a new flight controller. Um, yes, I've flown it. Have I completely switched to it yet? No, because I have no issues with the older stuff and I'm just kind of like leaving these quads as a pill in time uh, of how amazing this thing is for me and how it does everything I need it to do. But that doesn't really help anyone else because no one can, <laughs> no one can get this equipment. Um, so with that being said, I also have been very curious about these. And since I've flown the Ivata with the dildo that uh, Stuka or a drone archie FPV gave me, or he didn't let me, he didn't give it to me, he let me borrow it, so shout out to Stuka. He let me borrow his Avada for way too long. Uh, I just never got around to it, and then I eventually did. So these goggles, which I'll open here in a minute, um, they're unopened, they still have the cellophane on them. Uh, I flew that thing, and I was kind of impressed. So DJI has always impressed me as far as like the goggles and the, the radio link is control uh, concerned, but the goggles are kind of big, and like I had to pick whether or not I wanted to fly freestyle or I wanted to fly... Uh, DJI just because I can fly DJI again fast and slow and or fast and low but 
I just don't really enjoy it. Like it's not as fun to me. It's, it changes your flying style because you can see more and you're not necessarily trying to hit all the gaps super fast to do flips and tricks through them. Um, so I just like explore. So without further ado, I'll kind of talk about my new style slash setup that I'm in the process of creating. Um, and maybe you guys will kind of agree with me. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll hate me. Maybe you'll unsubscribe and subscribe to this Mr. Steel YouTube channel that uh, apparently all of my URLs go to now because YouTube changed some crap. So anyways, let's get down to it. I'll just go ahead and show you this. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it. This is the DJ or not the DJI. This is the Apex LR. So it's a eight inch. It really, it carries seven inch props, but um, you know, you could probably run like a seven and a half inch prop. It's got a lot of clearance. I would say not seven and a half, but like a 7.1. It's got some decent clearance with seven inch props. But the idea behind this thing was I actually, uh, it's an apex body, so it's not any different than the apex body currently. Um, it fits the new O3 unit. However, the camera does fit in there, but it sees some standoffs. So we're kind of working on that right now at GetFPV. There is some like 3D printed mounts that'll push the camera a little forward. The new camera is kind of a weird larger design. so. You know, it's not necessarily designed. And people are like, why didn't you make it compatible with this? Well, this thing's kind of been in the works now for since since February of this year. So a long time. And it was already scheduled. Everything was cut to come out in like early November before the DJI thing came out. And then stuff got stuck in customs. And anyways, we just said, screw it. It's been long enough. Let's just release it. We can make something else. Uh, for this uh, 03 unit if everybody seems to adopt it, which it kind of seems like people are adopting it, at least the people that have the money to spare. Um, but anyways, this thing is a big seven inch drone. It's an Apex body, so it's made by Impulse RC. I love it. Um, I fly it like, this is not, I like again, I don't fly super long range, so don't get me wrong, but this thing does fly for a long period of time. At least this setup, I'll run like a 4,000 milliamp 4S on the bottom. I had some guys complaining the other day. They were like, why are you, it's not a big enough, the body's not big enough to put a battery on. Well, yes, that is that is part of the reason why I would undersling a battery if you're gonna run something stupid and fly for like 20 minutes. Um, but a 4,000 milliamp 4 cell on this particular setup, which I can go into more detail of, um, but these are the original Moon Boots 2407, 1739 KV with a seven inch prop from Zong at HQ Props. And it flies for about 14 to 16 minutes, depending on how you fly um, at sea level. If you go up in the elevation, it flies for 12 minutes at 18, 19, 20,000 feet. How do I know? Because I've tested it. Um, anyways, yeah, when I was at Mount Everest, I flew this thing and it flew for quite a long time, 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes, depending on how you flew with a 4,000 milliamp four cell. Why would I go four cell? It's a little more affordable. It's a little less to go wrong. There's a lot more availability out there and it works with the motors really well. And I honestly like a higher cell count on a really big prop motor. It doesn't make a lot of sense on a lightweight aircraft, at least I've found. Um, yes, if you're flying like a Komodo or something, it makes a lot more sense to have a higher torque. But other than that, yeah, that thing's cool. Um, next, my five inch rigs from here on out. Uh, this is my DJI slash crossfire rig. Um, I'm going to be putting these O3 air units in it and flying them. Uh, as far as right now is concerned, I'm just going to run these little 3D printed mounts that you can get from uh, uh, GetFPV. It'll push the camera further forward. Uh, I'm going to be running the Hero 11 Mini on my exploratory drones. I'm trying to keep everything super light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the 11 Mini and put a slightly larger battery on the aircraft and then have the O3 unit on there. And then I'll be running Crossfire Diversity down there and that'll be like my exploratory drone. So I'm gonna run a little bit bigger battery. I've got some motor stuff in the works right now and some new prop stuff in the works as well. Um, and that'll hopefully give me about eight minutes of flight time cruising around, probably like five ripping. And uh, it'll have super crazy penetration as uh, this stuff does and super high quality HD video. I should be able to live stream with it. I'm gonna kind of use it as like an exploratory scenario, like have fun with it and explore and use FPV what I originally thought it was for way back in the day. So anyways, that's kind of my setup right now as far as what I feel like is gonna happen in the future. Uh, I'm still running my analog 
goggles. I've got my Hello Kitties here, my HDO2s. Um, I do really like these goggles. I was kind of unimpressed with them when I first put them on because they didn't really fit my face, but I found some watching other people, uh, honestly, just looking at some foam options that you can put on this thing. It kind of doesn't make my nose as flat anymore. And um, yeah, I ended up ordering some because of that reason. I didn't think they were gonna fit my face very well because the first time I tried them, they didn't and they were kind of smashing my nose, but you know, there's always some modification to get around that. Um, I'll answer some questions now. And uh, anyways, yeah, let's answer some questions. So do I still have my Tyrannus X90? Yes, I do. I still have two of them, all of my original ones I do. And um, this is not an Egyptian t-shirt, this is a Nepal, Nepali t-shirt. It's from Nepal, I guess. It is from Nepal, yeah. Uh, 4S allowed next year in the US, right? <laughs> Only 4S. Yeah, the whole like, uh, speaking of that, the whole like remote ID thing is gonna throw a wrench in some of this stuff as well, so that's kind of been a little bit of a deciding factor. Again, like I love flying my analog stuff and for the style flying I do, it's great, but I get all these people all the time, they're like, well, I can't, like what do you what do you suggest? And I'm like, well, I wouldn't buy my analog gear, I would buy HD, I would buy something like DJI or HD Zero or Walk Snail or something like that. So just because it's gonna give you a better initial experience. Um, I am great, what's up FPV? I am tired, but I am great. Uh, I'm kind of, I was kind of frustrated. I, it took me like 30 minutes to figure out how to do this live streaming thing again. I haven't done it in so long. Um, so I appreciate you guys bearing with me, especially during the situation earlier where I tried to go live in my basement and everyone's like, I can't hear you. But then some people called me and said they could hear me. It was kind of ridiculous. So I don't fly PPG anymore, my, Mitch. Uh, I sold my PPG stuff. I just don't have enough time, man. I got so many damn hobbies that I enjoy doing. I just don't have time to do all that stuff. And it was kind of cutting into my early or late night uh, flying. If I was going to fly, I like to fly in the evenings, golden hour, and in the mornings if I get up that early sometimes. So, and PPG is very specific to those times of day. You want to fly in like calm winds. So, I ended up just selling it. It was 15 grand just hanging out in my basement. And I fucking, sorry my language, I hated the two stroke engine that I had. I hated it. It was a piece of crap. Uh, I had 20 hours on it. Uh, no, it had 36 hours on it when I sold it, I want to say. 20 to 36, something like that, I can't remember. But something something low, and it was just constantly breaking on me. So, stupid. How do you start FPV, Andrew Graham? Uh, I would suggest getting a radio and getting uh, um, a, a simulator. I don't know which simulators are good now. I've always used Velocidrone, but I don't play Sims. So when people ask me what sim I play these days, I don't, I haven't played a sim in over a year, so I couldn't tell you which ones are the best. I know that some of them, the graphics were really good back in the day, and some of them, the, the simulation was really good. That was why I liked Velocidrone, but I'm assuming they've all kind of gotten better. And you can get the basics down pretty good, regardless of which one you use, just getting familiar with throttle, roll, yaw, and pitch, um, and then arming and disarming, those are super important. Uh, what I think about the Hero 11 Mini, I, can't, I talked about that earlier as far as in this particular stream goes. I, At first I was a little disappointed because it's not really that much lighter than this. This is like 180 something grams and it's got a screen on it. I had the bones for a while. I didn't like the bones because I didn't have a screen to really check exposure. Um, I do like the full size Hero 11, but for my exploratory drones I'm going to try to replace some of the weight that I would put on with a camera and put it onto the battery so that I can keep the aircraft lightweight and I think the mini is going to do that for me the hero uh, or sorry the action 2 I do really like it as far as the form factor is concerned brain 3d printed me a bunch of mounts for the hero uh, 11 mini and this is an action 2 mount this is my Neapolitan action 2 mount I love it um, but I do love the lightweight action the lightweight of the action but for like exploratory stuff, I don't think the weight's gonna matter that much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run the action or the 11 mini without the screen, kind of like the session, just lock it, set it and forget it with the, um, with the features as far as like what I'm gonna shoot in. I'll probably shoot in 4K 30 all the time. Um, and that'll be what I use just cause I think the dynamic range is gonna be way better than the action too. Actually, I know it is. So that's kind of why I do that. When you have the 18,000 feet material to watch, I 
I already have it out there. <laughs> you can see it all over my YouTube. Um, there's a video of me flying through base camp. Uh, there's a video of me flying. Uh, I mean, I just posted it recently. Like, nobody saw it. Nobody cares. So, it's there. You can go look. I've been in Nepal twice. I've been there a total of two months in the last year. Um, so, it's all over YouTube. I have a full vlog series from, like, it's like 12 part series of me hiking from uh, Lukla to base camp. So, and then, you know, flying at base camp and then flying up in the glaciers and whatnot. So, the Kumju Glacier. Anyways, Kumju Icefall. Um, tracers or Crossfire. So, currently on my freestyle rigs, the faster ones, I'll be running Tracer. Um, but on the DJI rigs, I'm going to run Crossfire just because I want a little bit more penetration. Yes, I do agree that some of these things like um, uh, Express LRS are really, really good now, and 2.4 is more than adequate to do a lot of stuff, especially with DJI. Um, I wouldn't use the DJI Link personally, just because I don't want to use their radio. I still like a Mambo as like my, my preferred radio, um, just because I like the form factor of it. And I'm still working on something else that's going to hopefully come out at some point. It's been in the works for four years now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like ideally I'll probably run Crossfire, um, and Express LRS is amazing. I just have always worked with TBS stuff. I'm associated with TBS. Um, you know, I'm just going to stick with what I know. I understand it. I understand how it works. I'm not saying that it's the best. I'm just saying that it works for what I do. And that's all I can do is do what I do. And then if you know, if you want to, if you want to have the best of the best, it's never stopped me in the past, um, from from uh, completing what, I don't know. I've always had people say like, why don't you use this? Why don't you use that? But I guess at the end of the day, like does you guys using that stuff make you a better pilot? If it does, then do it. Um, I don't, I guess I'm handicapped in a sense of I'm flying old outdated crap and I suck as a pilot. So I, I don't know what you want me to say. Uh, regular Ben said, would you think, do you think Avada would be okay for first FPV? If I've gotten a crash and burn, or if it, if I've got the crack, the cash to burn, uh, anything else obvious I should get instead. Not looking to do tricks, just tight shots. So I like the Ivada a lot. Um, it's amazing. I saw I have a video that I'm going to post in a couple of days uh, of my dad flying it. He's never flown FPV ever. He's never flown anything remote controlled, maybe other than like a plane. Uh, for a split second or an RC car for a split second. Um, I've given him the controls on planes and stuff before and he's driven some RC cars So he has very little RC experience and I was able to give him the little controller the I call it the dildo But the the hand controller not the stick controller And I just gave him that and said here fly it have fun point and I gave him a five second explanation And then I said go and it was freaking amazing like he flew it around he had fun he put the goggles on he was flying around the house like exploring going up and looking at the chimneys and doing all kinds of crazy stuff that i would never ever have expected anyone to be able to do especially with complete zero experience however the only downside of the Ivada is yes if you do crash it it's pretty durable i crashed it a few times like flying a freestyle around the backyard and it seemingly was fine um but if you do crash it and it breaks i would just try to get it repaired through dji um the other thing is is if you um, if you want to record HD video and you want to use the Ivada's onboard camera, I don't think it's the best. Uh, it works. It works really well. I would prefer to go with a GoPro, but if you're just completely like new to it and you just want some kind of shots, the Ivada camera is going to do you great. So again, yeah. Shelby, what's up? Next year. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe next year. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have to go to freaking Charlotte or Raleigh. I forget which one you're in, but at some point again. I was up in Charlotte a couple months, like six months ago with Ryan. It's fun. A new analog Clearview 3.0 is out. Mmm. Yeah, I'm not really... I'm not, I, don't, I don't have anything against Clearview. I just... My module works fine. I can't imagine there's something that's super cutting edge in the analog world these days. It's very minimal increments of, but I, I'm open to look at it I mean I'm not gonna say it's completely completely useless I've never even heard of it so I just kind of use what I have and uh, that's where I go from there so I think I'm just gonna open these goggles real quick just to kind of get a fresh box perspective because I know the ones that I had were slightly used 
Um, let me grab a guitar pick or something to open these. I'm kind of anal about how I open boxes. I don't like to rip the cellophane too much, even though I'll never use it again. I will never, ever, ever touch the cellophane ever again after this moment, but for some reason, that OCD will not let me rip into it like a savage. So all of those YouTube videos that you've seen of people just like ripping into stuff savagely, you can you can tune out right now because I'm gonna pre precariously open this with much, oh God, I just scratched the outside. All right, you know what? I, I, I dented the box. So sad. Not really. Um, how the hell does DJI expect you to open this? Oh, there's a little Apple pull tab thing right there. So we get this Apple pull tab. Let me tilt this down so you can see. Oh my God. Okay, it's not gonna tilt down. It doesn't like me. There we go, nice. So here we go. Some goggles. They've got this sneaky little stuff in here. You gotta register them apparently, cause why not? Ooh, look at this cute bag it comes in that I'm gonna rip on accident. Oh, no, we're good. Dude, these things are so small. I know I had a set like a couple weeks ago, but they're, they're so cute. They do mess my nose up with the stock foam though, I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, just like stabbing me in the face. What else does it come with? A cool little stretchy cable. I do like the stretchy cable. What else? Some uh, some little diopter adjusters or diopters, I guess. The stupid. Oh yeah, how do the? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get rid of this thing. I've heard horror stories about this piece of crap. Like, what is this? Is this the goggle strap? Yeah, it's actually not that bad. It's kind of th well thought out. Okay. I don't like how there's a... Like, who thought this was a great idea to put this kind of joint on the back of your head? I guess that works. Whatever. I've never even seen the stock strap, so... I got nothing to complain about other than what I would assume doesn't work, but these guys spend a lot of time engineering things, so what do I know? I just use it. Uh, some kind of USB-C to USB-A adapter and the battery. Oh God, oh Jesus Christ. I do, don't, I do dislike how the new battery system is like seven to nine volts. So this is seven to nine volts only on these goggles. You can't plug in anything else. You can't plug in a half charged 3S, it won't work. You can plug in like a half charged, or a fully charged 2S and it will work for a moment, but then it will die. So anyways, there are my goggles. I'm probably not even gonna, I'll put this strap on, whatever. Let's open one of these Air 2 or uh, O3 units up and kinda see what that's all about. You know what, I don't need this USB-A to USB-C adapter, so I'm just gonna just drop that in there and put that in the thing. I have people been asking me questions? Someone. Tibetan Steve. <laughs> We're getting Eric in here. What's up, Eric? Uh, let's get some Apple pull tab right there and open this up. Dude, it's late for you, isn't it? What is it, like six o'clock here? It's probably midnight in, in the UK. Unbox the O3. All right, so here's the O3, as you can see. Ooh, important notice. Avoid abnormal performance caused by overheating. Make sure to mount the Air 3 O unit in the aircraft with good ventilation and heat dissipation. AKA, your shit gonna burn down to the ground. It's gonna be like a damn Samsung phone, but it's gonna be all these drones flying around. Uh, okay, so I guess it comes in this sweet thing. They, As much as DJI cares about their rack packaging, they didn't do a great job about not bending that. Dude, this thing is so ridiculous. High quality. Uh, it's got this nice little braided cable on there. It's got this dual antenna setup. 
which is kind of cool, like UFL to one antenna. I'm sure you can run two. I'm sure, actually, I know you can run two. You just split two antennas off and run them. It's got USB-C on the side right here. It's got four little cobblaze, five cobblaze. Sorry, six, six cobblaze. Oh my God, there's so many cobblaze. Is it, does it come out? Oh yeah, it comes out. A little Molex connection. Nice. This is, this is good. And this does fit in the back of a, of an Apex. And I want to say like you can take out these four screws and then mount it from the bottom if you get a different type set of screws. So that would be kind of cool. Does it have anything else in there? Or is it just that? Oh, there's jelly in there. There's a gel packet keeping all the moisture out. Why don't we just eat that for later? Um, yeah, so there's your DJI Air Unit thing, the O3. The camera's kind of funky, but I don't see why it's going to be an issue. Looks good to me. Um, again, I have these little 3D printed pieces right here that are going to fit. Uh, these guys apparently go... Oh, these replace the front standoffs. <laughs> that might be an issue. Didn't realize. Is this, this is uh, like Pet G or something? So these apparently are 3D printed mounts that replace the front standoffs on an Apex, which the front standoffs on an Apex are, are aluminum, so if you explode with these boys, you're going down. But yeah, kind of looks like that. We'll see. There's going to be a better fix here soon, obviously with uh, everything coming out like super quickly and then nobody having anything for it. I'm sure there are a few humans out there that have CNC's in their backyard that can just, you know, call and be like, hey, I need this fixed. But unfortunately in Australia, you can't even order an, o an Air th uh, or a new set of goggles or the O3 unit. You can't get the units in China or in Australia. So if you want this, you gotta buy a Nevada. And uh, if you want this, you gotta know somebody out of the country that can ship it in for you. So. Anyways, I think what happened is I think they bought a Nevada and then we're able to get some of these over at Impulse. So it'll be soon enough that that'll come out. And um, yeah, you won't have to do the work around with the 3D printed part. You can just have whatever the top plates and stuff. But for now, I mean, that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the 3D printed part. Uh, let's put this stupid thing on real quick. I think uh, I've seen, I know Stuka did this. So Stuka, which is his old name, but his, his new name is uh, Drone Archie FPV. He, um, he just cut a slit into the side here. He just literally cut a slit right there and then slipped the old ethics goggle set in there. Um, but, you know, I get it if you don't want to cut your goggles. We'll have a goggle strap that'll come out for these boys at some point in the near future. I think... Uh, the little tiny skinny mount right there is really the issue. But yeah, this goggle set is pretty fucking cool. I'm impressed. I feel like it's too big. This goggle strap, what kind of giant head is this made for? Because uh, that is the uh, that is the amount of, I guess you could shorten the sides a tiny bit. Let's, let's let's get this thing me measured up for my head, and then I'll realize that a two-year-old can't put this on their heads. Okay, yeah, so that's the tightness that I would rock, and look how much excess is left. So obviously, DJI thinks that whoever's buying this has no nose, they have no bridge of their nose, and they have a very, very large head. But uh, if you do have a large head, you're in luck, because uh, this is the neutral. This is the neutral piece and that would fall off my head very easily. So, whatever. Like I said, all this stuff can be modified. I'm not worried about it. Questions? Any questions? Before I bail and go eat something for the first time today? Can wear a hoodie at the same time and look really cool? I. There are people that do that, and I find them to be very cool, like way too cool for me. So I, I can't, I can't wear a hoodie and fly drones at the same time. I think Tommy's the king of that. Tommy Tabahia. 
He's the master of all hoodies. Um, yeah. You need foam inserts. I agree. There needs to be new foam. There needs to be a new uh, goggle strap. There needs to be a battery option. There needs to be a, a front plate for this. There needs to be a mounting solution for this. There needs to be new antennas that possibly have higher gain. Uh, yeah, there needs to be a lot done. I do like this. However, out of all the things today that suck, this is my favorite. I love the old freaking phone cord action. I do like it. I think all of the cables that I come out with from now on are going to have this sick, twisty phone cord action. I love it. Um, yeah. Also, I got some motors in the works. They're real close. Uh, you may have seen some of them on the leak of the... Uh, it's not really a leak, but the seven inch dead cat, um, there is a motor on there that maybe you've never seen before. So anyways, yeah, brain. Okay. Yeah. So brain 3d does have some mounting solutions for the O3 on the hero mini. I talked about it earlier in the stream. I think it's around 24 minutes. So if you want to go back and fast forward and find it. Yeah. Talk about the hero mini. I think it's a great camera, but I sometimes don't like not having a screen but it just depends on the scenario, but I'll be using it in the future. So I got some 3D printed mounts from Brain, uh, or Brian, Brain, Brain 3D. So anyways, shout out to Brain 3D, shout out to Stuka FPV, shout out to Konasty. Uh, the guys that gave me some money earlier, I appreciate you didn't have to do that, but thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll be flying more here in the near future. Shelby Bowl and uh, Tiny Whoop gave me some money and regular Ben as well. Thank you guys so much, you didn't have to do that. Um, so anyways, thank you. Namaste, my guy. <laughs> Peace. Have a great weekend, you guys.